Senator Hotel Esquire, will be joining us. And today's topic actually is about what you are not supposed to say or the implications of you saying something wrong live on TV as a presenter. Now, my two guests will tell us how the seasons have evolved over two decades. Media space is not the same anymore. Doreen will tell us the experience. Of course, we'll hear the experience for the others as well. Today will be fantastic. I've been dancing. I'm tired. Let me take a quick breather to drink some water. And when we come back, the show begins. My name is Rosalind Feli. Do stay. beautiful is that it never remains the same when you look at it it changes and it changes because you looked at it again change is good it makes you see the various aspects of life that you didn't know change challenges you to do what you think you could never do if you want to be relevant and impressed with time society and the world then be ready for changes We'll bring you intriguing conversations, live performances, and of course, shocking revelation from our guests. Welcome to the brand new season of Changes with me, Rosalind Feli, and it's twice a week, and it's live on Jart Prime. <laughs> Are you ready to have the blast of a lifetime? Get ready for the newest and ultimate game show here on Joy Prime, Family Arena! The Family Arena is a fun-filled game show which you see families battle it out in exciting games and quizzes to win amazing cash prizes and lots of other goodies as well. We are going to have so much fun here on the Family Arena. Now, to participate, send your family name and the first name of three of your family members to 0551 57 57 57. And join us on this ultimate new game show, the Family Arena. Welcome to a new dispensation. Where the sting of a strike, the stroke of a spike, and the caress of a punch, this the squeeze of a rim, and the pressure never stops. This is Sports Zone, where the rush of the action gets the coverage it deserves. Every Monday at 9 p.m., only on Joy Prime. Sports Zone is sponsored by Hunters. Syntax Tank, are you strong? Are you tough? Hello, Mom. It's me. Jesus, Coco, where are you? Is that the sound of your daughter? Bugatti <laughs> Shiro. She's fat. Are you out of your mind? I'm serious. Are you guys involved in some kind of armed robbery? No, there's no way. Yes. Today is a day. I'm here for my money. What's up with the coins? This coin's not money. What's up? Do you watch how you talk to me? What do you really want from me? Get rid of the boy. Don't touch my wife. I want to lay my hands on her myself. You can't do me nothing, Paul. You're a coward. Are you daring me? Shoot me, Paul. <laughs> Shoot me! In the world of the rich, everything comes with a price. This is all my fault. Be careful, okay? We still have to get married. We held each other's secrets. You still don't know the kind of family you got yourself into. He's still my brother. He's still my family. And that
watching season two of Changes. So there's the first day after two years, but we are back and we are back with a banger. We know your afternoon just got better because of Changes. My name is Rosalind Feli. I am not here alone. And now my studio audience are here. I love my studio audience so much. <laughs> and of course, I have the Sappers Band who is here as well. Now, earlier, I did tell you that media has changed. Media has evolved. It's, it's, it's been a journey, I must say. Those who paved the way, we ought to celebrate them. But they need to tell us how they struggled to pave that way for us. We can't just welcome them to, them to sit down just like that. We have to usher them in because they ushered in the music. You know the journal of like hip life? And when we talk about hip life, who made hip life? These people made hip life. I'm talking about one woman and one gentleman. Now, this woman has a soothing voice, a golden voice, the radio voice. Doreen Andor and the man, we call him the red man, who was speaking at Rich Rich Contome. Ed and Blaze, the building, some of us give them something as we welcome them. amazing in the studio today and we know that you have people at home who are watching now if you have any message please send it to us our whatsapp line is very very active we'll read your messages because we have a segment dedicated to that now my guest welcome <laughs> thank you thank you welcome. i think i'm more excited than <laughs> today wow welcome i grew up watching the two of you uh, for you doreen i don't know my afternoon my mid-morning was always great because mm -hmm. I knew I hear mm -hmm. love songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and for Eddie, you know, you were speaking the slang. What is that? Uh, contumere? What? Contumere? What? <laughs> did you have it for lunch? Ah, I, 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 well, yesterday I did actually. <laughs> funny enough. You did. You did. Yesterday, it, it helps with the, you know, yeah. with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now let's talk about your journey. You've been on air for more than two decades. How did it start Yeesh. with you, uh, Doreen? It started by mistake. But it was a mistake and a blessing in disguise because when it started out for me, I was on my way to the university, but the lecturers were on strike. Oh. And so I chose to find something to fill my time. And I came by Joy FM and I said, well, give me something to do. And they're like, where's your audition tape? I don't have it. I didn't know anything like an audition tape. But they gave me an opportunity. I took, a, I took that opportunity. I run with it. And here we are, 29 years down the line. Wow. Yeah. 29 years yep. on radio. Yep. Wow. Does it get tiring sometimes? Yes, it does. But you always have to know how you pace yourself. You take a break, you learn new things, and you come back to it. Talking about learning new things, we'll get to learn it. Let me talk to Eddie. Hi, yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Looking amazing, you are. Thank you so much. Yes. Is your accent. What accent? <laughs> My accent is... Am I the only one? You are the only one. You're the only one. I beg, I beg, I beg. I'm not the only one. She's the only one. She's the only one. So I'm not alone in this. They're, right? they're pandering to you. You are with me here. Yeah, because you're the studio audience. That's why. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's talk about how the journey started for you as well. Uh, I used to rap. Um, I used to be a, in a group called Native Funk Lords. Right. Um, and we did a, a few hip life songs back in the day. And my dad was a famous boxer who went to an interview um, at Metro TV back in the day. And the, the owner of Metro TV saw my dad, they were friends, and he said, I saw your son rapping on television. Do you think he'd be interested in, uh, in you know, hosting a show called Smash TV? Uh, and my dad came back to me and he's like, would you like to try? I went for the audition. And this is about, man, I forget, about 30 years ago, something like that, you know. Like I started really, really I, was like, I was like 
I was like 17 years old. I was really young. And, um, and yeah, so I went to do the audition. Um, and my first audition was crazy. I had to interview all the big names at the time, uh, Kojo Entry and uh, Papa Yanks. And they were doing this big show. They said, yeah, go, go, go and interview them. <laughs> but, uh, but they're eating at Golden Tulip Hotel. I'm there eat. No, no, you go, 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 go. Do it. Just go and interview them. So I went and I, and I, I broke my cherry like that. You know, right. like I, 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 so after that, I'm like, there's no interview that I can't do right. because I, I went through that. That was my baptism in fire. Right. <laughs> now, how different was TV then? It was TV for you. You started with TV. I started with television, yes. Hero, right? Yes, yes. How different was it as compared to today? I mean, there were only three channels at the time, if I remember correctly. There was like Metro, uh, that was on GTV at the time. Um, TV3, uh, those, those, and GTV, of course. Um, so there was literally no opportunity. You had to be the best of the best of the best of the best mm. to get on television. So at that time, it was very competitive. Um, and now, I mean, now, of course, it's better for everyone. There's all these the social media, there's everything, there's 100 television stations. So, but at that time, because of the competitiveness, it made you want to be great. Mm. You had to be different. You had to come and bring something to the table. Yeah. Like you see like this. Welcome to the show. My name is Eddie Blay. This is a, you know, that kind of thing. And that was the kind of thing that blew people away. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that was the, the biggest difference between now and then. Mm -hmm. Were you always practicing? Yeah, yeah. I, I used to like to talk. Now, not so much. The older you get, the less you want to talk. You want mm. to just listen, mm. you know, when you get older. Right. But back in the day, I just wanted to talk. I wanted to get my opinions heard. My dad said I should have been a lawyer, you know, because I like to debate. Yeah. You know, I always like to talk about stuff. So, uh, yeah, th that's how it began, but now, you know, now, now you prefer to just re relax and, you know, read the room and then, you know, mm -hmm. talk when you're spoken to. Talk when you're spoken to, wow, mm -hmm. that's deep. <laughs> Doreen, do you agree with that? Talk when you're spoken to, you are soft-spoken. Um, I thought you had a different radio voice from your speaking voice, mm -hmm. but when I met you, I realized that you actually speak like that. That is me. I mean, what you see is what you get. And in as much as he's saying, talk, what? Don't talk until you're spoken to. Well, now, in my old age. Back yeah. then, it was different. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that a lady should not only be, you know, be heard, but be seen. Or the other way around. Mm. You, have, you must not always be seen, but also be heard. So, you know, you got to play it in both ways, because then you want your voice to be heard at the right time. At the right and time. And you want to be seen and heard at the right mm. time. So you got to be able to balance both. Now, they always say that when you're a celebrity, you ought to be scarce. Was that the same for you at that time? I've never, I never read any book that said that. But what I believe in being unique and being you. So if you want to put yourself out there, then know what you're putting out there. Make sure it's worth it. Right. But if you're going to put something out there, make sure it's worth your while. Mm. So, you know, like I said, you've got to balance both and know who you are and not try to be like other people. Other people will probably like to be seen all the time mm. because they are celebrities. Mm. And if you feel that you want to be just be in the back but still be a celebrity, that's also on you. So it, it depends on the individual and how they want to treat it. Mm. Now, was management very strict back then if you have to be a radio presenter or a TV presenter? Um, lucky for me, I got the kind of management that allowed me to be me. I, like now I, I'm on that the other side. I now manage people. And I, I have that same um, uh, aspect. I, I look at it like, you know what? You're there for a reason. You're there because you are talented. I need to bring out the talent for you from you. If I try and restrict you and you're, then I'm, I'm like, then why are you even here? Then I might as well put AI on, you know? So if, if the, the point is you're, you're there for a reason. Lucky for me, I had that opportunity where the managers were open-minded and they allowed me to be me and to speak freely. Um, I got fired a couple of times for speaking a bit too freely. Uh, I learned my lesson the oh, hard oh, way. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. What happened? Share your experience. Oh, well, there was one time there was, <laughs> I was doing a show um, and, and I kind of like, they had, it was a tele telco company that was sponsoring the show. Mm. And by then the telcos were horrible at the time and there was a bad service everywhere. And I kind of called them out on television. And the guy, the, my boss, came, Eddie, are you are you crazy? <laughs> hey, the, they are the, the sponsors of the show. Eddie, you 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 want to you, you've lost so much money from us. Eddie, you, I'm sorry, Eddie, you have to go. And so I got fired. And in hindsight, I realized that I messed up. Why? <laughs> because you wouldn't do that now. Mm. But you see, it was a different me back then. I was the rebellious type. I wanted to like shake things up. I wanted to like you know move. The, and my my producer got fired as well because. He was also like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Eddie, go tell him, tell him. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, <laughs> so we both got fired. 
But um, I got my job back a few years later, you know, okay. on a different show. Okay. And uh, this time I was like, okay, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. Uh, <laughs> we love our sponsors. <laughs> we love everybody. Everybody loves everyone. So uh -huh. it was fine. Even if you don't like it, you have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yes. But I believe that now um, in, in the current age, it's also good to speak up when things are not. I mean, yeah. you have to know your limit. I'm looking forward to hearing your segment with uh, Sena, mm -hmm. lawyer Sena, about yeah. what to say and what not to say yeah. as a presenter. Okay. Because I, I believe that now also the thin line is a bit thinner because, you know, the social media, like I said, people are more vocal about what they have to say. And if, this, if something is wrong, you have to speak up. Where the, the media is the voice of the people. I mean, you have to be able to, like, speak up when things are wrong and when you see that things are not going wrong without offending the necessary parties and without making it personal as well. Yeah. Doreen, I know you haven't been fired because you've been here for 29 years. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to tell I tried to tell them that. Hard. I had to tell the line. What I had to tell the, the line. restrictions as well. Well, um, for me because I started doing radio, I learned from the get-go that um, we should pretty much weigh the songs we play. Mm. Songs with new lyrics was definitely a no, no. You had to make sure you sample the music before you put it on air. Okay. That's one. The second thing what too was... the songs that, you know, you couldn't put on air? Um, what lyrics? Um, I want to hear this. Well, if you, yeah, I mean, the, if, if you look at the um, R. Kelly 12 Play album, there's several songs on that album that you can play on radio. And of course, you, you also see, had to learn. You early. saw it earlier that R. Kelly was. <laughs> oh. was you see, you caught, you, you caught on quick. That was good. <laughs> and yes, I mean, the thing is, um, at that time, you also had to make sure that you're learning the songs and knowing which ones were radio edit, which means that they were clean songs. Okay. Because, of course, radio is just a medium of teaching people. Mm. And so if you're teaching people, you have to know how to teach the right way. And of course, another thing too is radio being a, mo a mode of teaching people, you had to make sure that you were pronouncing words the right way, mm -hmm. be it local mm -hmm. or foreign words, because that, that was a total yes or no. Right. If you get it right, you get it right. And if you got it wrong, you ought to you know, make sure that you correct it. And on radio, when it's gone, it's gone. You can't mm -hmm. pull it back. Mm -hmm. So you had to be really careful about what you were saying. Make sure you learn pronunciations pretty well, because those things are very crucial, because you're trying to educate people in the process of um, your broadcast. Did you have to do voice training as well? Yes. I didn't do voice training, but I had to do language training. Okay. Uh -huh. um, thanks to Mr. Sam Yeboa. He came in for probably two months. He was in to teach all the presenters. We went through lessons every day to learn the right pronunciations because a lot of people will butcher local names. Mm. And you don't want to. And it was do unpardonable. That. Of, of course. To butcher local. So we, then we are lucky. Uh, we so butcher, you, we have walked away, you have walked away with too much. <laughs> no, because some, somebody is sitting in their village yeah. and they're probably listening to a funeral announcement and it's um, a, um, a village in Discov area. It's Chavene. And the spelling mm -hmm. is not the same as the pronunciation. So you probably would probably say Chaven mm -hmm. because that's how you see it. And the person is sitting there and you're reading and like, it's my village and you mispronounced my village name. It's probably some chief or something. You might get that phone call. It won't be pleasant, mm. but you would get it. And right. I don't want to be in those shoes. Man. It's not funny. So then we'll say that current media personalities need this kind of training, right? Oh, it's something that I've preached about time without number. That before you put anybody on a radio behind a microphone, that person should go through training. It is is, is the most important thing you can do, especially for your listeners, not even for the person who's sitting there. Mm. Because you're trying to educate and you're trying to also get people to learn things. So you can't just get up and just do it. I mean, a lot of people have gotten away with a lot of murder, but who am I? To talk. To talk. But you are Dorinando. Oh, I'm just little me. <laughs> <laughs> now, Eddie, for uh, your time, we heard about payola. Mm -hmm that people had to pay payola to presenters if you want to be a celebrity or you want your song to be a hit. How yeah. true is this? Oh, yeah, it was, it was quite rampant back in the day, especially during um, when I was like in, in the music business actively. Um, I remember KK Dua, may his soul rest in peace, used to, when he took us to these radio stations, there was, he was always going with, a, with an envelope of money where he would, you know, after the interview, after the interview, you know, hook people up. Um, it was, it's something that goes on still today, I would say. Um, it, it's a bit tricky because it's, it's hard to really 
it's, it's a very big debate. Mm -hmm. this, you'd have to have a complete show over this, you know, just to talk about this. But um, back then, it was more rampant than it is now. Um, you don't, you don't expect DJs to take money from you if they have, it's their content and they're getting paid at the end of the month. But back then, it was, it was a struggle. A lot of DJs were not getting paid. A lot of presenters were doing it. Um, I did shows on radio for close to three, four years without getting paid, you know, and... So how were you surviving? Uh, on payola? Not, not necessarily, but whenever... I never really actively took back then because I was, I was more of the, the giver because, like I said, I was, I was, in, I was in a group. So... You survive by, by doing shows, by um, getting booked for gigs. Um, and, but the payola thing, it's something that's it's, it's hard to really put in a box and say, you know, this is wrong. Yes, it's wrong on so many levels. But the, if you listen to the other side of it, where a lot of the DJs and presenters back then will tell you that, oh, as soon as this artist blows up, we won't even hear from him again. Mm. You know, if getting him to come into a stu the studio for an interview, Seth, is a problem. So they won't even mind you. So a lot of them grew up with that mindset. They're like, you know what, if, you're gonna want, if you want me to play your song, you don't have to sort me out, you know, which it is wrong on so many levels, mm -hmm. but it's almost understandable when you say that, well, these guys will forget about you when, when they blow up and they will not even mind you. If you want them for content, they won't even mind you. Was that the case? Yes, it was the case. It still is the case. I mean, people blow up and they move on. Now there's a different strategy where... A lot of radio stations are getting into contracts mm. with with with, uh, with artists, and you know they like you know what, let's do this. Um, if we need you for an art uh, performance, then you need to make yourself available. Right. Um, so then there's that, you know, relationship that's built. That's what's happening now on so many levels. But back then it wasn't like that. Mm. Doreen, you held a lot of hands with music, talking about people like our two Bs. Uh, nobody mentions R2Bs without mentioning you. <laughs> They're my boys. They're your boys. Yes, I watched them grow up from my neighborhood where my grandma used to live. And so I knew them before they came up together as a group. Oh. And that's, so I knew them like boys in the neighborhood, you know. And so when they came out and started releasing music, I thought, hey, why not help my own? Now, these boys are big now. Oh, yeah, they are not boys anymore. They're, boys they're men. They are men. <laughs> they are huge. And, uh, you know, with regards to what Eddie is saying, have you ever experienced a situation where you've helped people blow and they don't come back again to say thank you or they even, you know, they don't come back when you need them on shows? Well, uh, it's... I have to say this guardedly in the sense that I play people's music because their music is good. I don't expect them to come back to me to say thank you. If you come back to me and say, Doreen, I thank you, I don't expect you to bring a gift with you because I believe that it's an ecosystem. We all will survive because we all have to hold each other's hand to get along, and which is great. And so I haven't had the opportunity to experience you know, people, you know, getting big and not knowing me, it's fine. I mean, I know musicians who've probably gotten big and when I probably see them, they probably would just nod, which is fine. But... You, Dorina, no? Oh, <laughs> you haven't come up. It's, 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 it's a topic for another show. <laughs> Yeah, people would just nod. Who, and, who will meet Dorin and just nod? Oh, I, do you want an example? Yes, please. I don't want to give <laughs> I knew you was. But I, 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 have, I, I have a number of them who will just see you and nod. And, you know, some of them will see you and be unruly. But bottom line is, hey, if you're big, you're big. I try to just, you know, do what I can do. But if I've helped you in the past and you've grown big, well, good on you. Mm. And um, this life is simple. If somebody does something for you and you don't appreciate and you give them just a nod when you see them, in God's own time, you deal with you. So I leave you to God like I do to any taxi driver. As a point in time, we all thought Doreen would produce, you know, a music. A music. A he came for some, actually. actually came to me one day. He said he wanted me to produce his music. And I said, you know what? I've been trained to be a radio and TV personality. Mm. I will not put my hands to something that I don't have n complete knowledge over. Don't, I won't give myself that stress. I could do it if I lent myself to it, but I haven't been trained to do it. So um, let me not mess up your career. <laughs> let me just be the one who will promote your music. That I can do. Okay. But, you know, to, pro pro to produce it, no, I haven't learned it from mm. scratch. I, I wouldn't What do about it. managing a talent? I could do that too, but, you know, um, yeah, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> what about 
for you, Eddie? You are managing talent. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't say managing per se. I would say I consult a lot with a lot of these um, coming, upcoming artists that are struggling. It's not easy, you know, mm. to break in. And I do it for the love of the, the, the art. I want to see them blow up. I, I, I really enjoy seeing the, the evolution of their, of their work. So there's a few artists that I'm working with currently. Um, mm. Uh, at least giving them some kind of guidance in terms of what to do and what not to do because it's a dog-eats-dog -dog, um, world here. Yeah. Um, the media industry, the music industry, the entertainment industry in Ghana, you know, if you're not on a certain level, you drop and nobody even minds you. So get, breaking in is where they, they struggle and I'm happy to give them that kind of um, um, insight in terms of what to do and what not to do. Yeah. Doris spoke yeah. about, you know, putting people on TV who or radio who are been through training, mm -hmm. thought of. Yes. Now it seems we are seeing more influencers on TV and radio. I mean, look, it's all changed now. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, uh, I was just talking about it. I was in a meeting the other day where um, some of these things came up and, and we were looking at content and some of the content that was put out there with 50 million, 250 million views. Mm. It was like, but it's like, okay, so that's, that's content, yes, but you look at it, the wardrobe's off. The, it's not even Kondomri at that time. He's not he's speaking, he's speaking uh, you know, Kelly Willie or something else. Yeah. And, you know, and it's like, it's just, it's not even, it's, it's, there's no flow, the angles are off, yeah. there's no real production value. Yeah. And they're getting views, and those views translate to money. Mm. So at the end of the day, as, as someone like me coming from the, you know, the old school, and I'm like, ah, so, you know, so that was, so let's forget about what we're doing, forget about the training, yeah. and let's just go, because now it's about the views. Yeah. And no matter what crass, quote unquote mm -hmm. content you put out there, mm -hmm. people people will love it. Yeah. So yeah, everyone and everyone is is there is a presenter, everyone is a producer, everyone's a DJ, everyone is an Instagram model. So pss, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, I'm not gonna be the bitter old guy who comes out, oh you you and back yeah. in my day, you people yeah. no 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 I'm not gonna yeah. be that guy. Mm, yeah. I'm gonna I'm happy that at least there's it's it's good. People have jobs, people have putting food on the table. Mm, yeah. So I have no problems with it at all. Yeah. If social media had been as prominent as it is now, then do you think <laughs> I would be in jail probably. <laughs> Maybe. If, if, personally I would be locked up. By Why? Now. Uh, let's just say back then it was a crazy time. You know, we knew there was no I mean, it was, it was, we were, we were going out and having good times and partying and we would be filmed, we wouldn't be filming all that stuff, but, you know, we'd be caught on camera, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, I mean, back then, on the other hand, too, we'd be, I'd be a, a millionaire by now. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, some of the things that you guys put out there. But granted, I mean, you've you've probably mentioned a few things. But I also, but I also, I, I always, it's not like I always want to be on the street side. But mm. when you look at it realistically, um, Ghanaians love mediocrity. Mm. Yes, because you put a mediocre video out there and it gets two million views. Some of them buy those views or some of them, you know, buy those views and get it on. But really and truly, is that what we want for our society? Is it Ghanaians or it's the new age, the new era? Because um, even when you go on TikTok, you when, are seeing these kind yeah, of videos you, as you well. You probably will see it maybe from Ghana, Nigeria, but do you see it from the Western world? Mm will be my next question. So maybe we should also get a system that also analyzes the kind of things that we put out there. Because like I always say, people are always trying to learn a thing or two. But it, is this the society we want to create? And if we want to create the society and we're going to allow it, how far will this take us? Look at where we are already. OK, so <laughs> talking about this, um, a lot of influencers, like I said, who have taken over TV, mm -hmm. taken over radio, mm -hmm. but nothing can change, can it? Do you think that media will change again? Mm. As it is now. Huh. Like, like the name of your show? Ch Ch <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. I think, I think um, it will run its course and then something new will come out. I mean, we didn't expect none of this. A lot of people here, I'm sure, never thought that social media would be, would be as big and influencers would be as big as they are. So obviously there's gonna be the shift and it's gonna happen that something else will come out that we don't even know about now. It hasn't been, it hasn't been thought of yet. The good thing is that you have to be the one to think about it. So as you know, if you're watching this, what can you do and what are you gonna to do to bring something new to the table? What are we all gonna do? Um, the idea is switch it up. 
don't just talk about it and, and, and just follow, don't be a follower, but become that leader. And I think that's where, that's what's going to happen for sure. Not now, maybe in 20 years, 30 years, whatever it takes, but definitely um, it's going to be a big shift. Yeah, maybe AI would probably help us. Yes, AI. AI, for example, it's already happening. Yep. You know, it's already started where yep. AI is, is already taking over in many aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. So. yeah. So things are definitely going to change. Yeah, media is also changing in such a way that very soon, a lot of people might not even go to social media to watch all these videos, like I was saying. Technology might change altogether, and it probably might just change the way we all view things and the way things will be done. I mean, like he's saying, it probably won't happen now, but if, when it happens, we will know, yeah. because then it would turn around a lot of things. When it happens, we'll definitely know, and I'm enjoying the conversation. Now, how strict were your producers? I worked for 10 years without a producer, so I don't know what it is to have worked with a producer from scratch. Mm, hmm? Yeah. Yeah. I worked for 10 years without a producer. I was my own presenter, producer. What about DJing? My own DJ. I, God, let me, permit me to add that Tell to you as well. I've always played my own music. Always. I never used a DJ. Never. Wow. I've learned to do it from scratch. Mm -hmm. Same with you, Eddie. For the most part. Um, DJ for sure, yes. I, I am my own DJ. I'm my own producer as well. Um, but when you, when you need help, get it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> if there's but people who can do it for you, then, yeah. yeah. Please give them a big round of applause. Now, this is something else. And uh, we are here with the whole team. A big thank you to my team, because seriously, <laughs> a big I don't team. know, wow, yeah, it's huge. I'm a huge team, so yeah. a very big Zero. thank you to my team for putting yeah. this together. Zero. Doreen has been doing this for 29 years, as she said, for 10 years, no producer. Yeah. She's been a DJ on her own, producing her own <laughs> show. Wow. Eddie, for mm -hmm. most part of it, same. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at a point in time, he said, I'm tired. I need to get a producer. Yeah. And that's how we do it. Why not? We'll take a quick break on this note. When we come back, we actually do have a game segment. Our audience will also ask the questions. And, of course, Sapper's band will definitely be giving us some great tunes. Do stay with us. Ready to have the blast of a lifetime? Get ready for the newest and ultimate game show here on Joy Prime Family Arena! The Family Arena is a fun filled game show which you see families battle it out in exciting games and quizzes to win amazing cash prizes and lots of other goodies as well. We are going to have so much fun here on the Family Arena. Now, to participate, send your family name and the first name of three of your family members to 0551 57 57 57 and join us on this ultimate new game show, the Family Arena.
you ready to have the blast of a lifetime? Get ready for the newest and ultimate game show here on Joy Prime, Family Arena! The Family Arena is a fun-filled game show which you see families battle it out in exciting games and quizzes to win amazing cash prizes and lots of other goodies as well. We are going to have so much fun here on the Family Arena. Now to participate, send your family name and the first name of three of your family members to 0551. 575757 57. and join us on this ultimate new game show, The Family Arena. right here on Joy Prime. Now, if you haven't sent in your messages yet, you can send it now. It's still not too late because Lloyd Shola is waiting to read your messages and also bring you the world, the, the, the entertainment world's news right here. You know the entertainment has a, new, a whole world, right? Yeah. It's different. It's not the regular ones that we know. No. <laughs> but you built the entertainment world in Ghana here. Oh, we're part of it. You were part, part of it. it. But we're minute. You are the pace setters, though. Yeah. There's a lot of other people. Love oh, there were people before we A lot did. of other people yeah. before us. No, but you oh, made a difference. Oh. We tried. So my studio <laughs> audience actually have questions also, right? Are you ready? So who is going to ask the first question? Yeah, let me say, yes. Talk, speak in the microphone. Um, please, my question is... Um, What's your name, darling? Please... I'm Ms. Elizabeth Champo. Okay. Okay. My question is, um, as during your presentation, I heard that they said the social media, some people post and a whole lot of things that are not supposed to be there, but then they still get views. And I'm asking this question, what has been their contribution towards that? Like, what are they working, their work towards that? As in, they been expect in the media work. Have they make any move to like talk to or make any management to minimize such things on the media? Thank you. Doreen or Eddie, who wants to take that question? Okay, um, I, I will probably answer it and I think um, Eddie will do that. The thing is, unfortunately, when I started working, there was nothing like computers and social media. And when social media took off, it ran so fast, nobody could hold it back. I am not in any position to, to hold back what happens on social media. But it behoves the Ghanaian government to say, look, this is our space. We, we are supposed to be putting things out there that are educative. Sometimes you can't really sanction it. But it's between, you know, the government, what we put out as rules and regulations on what we can put on social media in as much as it's a worldly thing, and then that way we'll be able to sanction what is being put out there. But we as media people, we might not be able to do much but to talk about it for the people in authority 
to hear and come to understand that it probably is harming our society. I mean, look, this, this, the way I see it also is that social media is exactly what it is. It's media for, you know, the population, the for, the, for, for the masses. Yeah. So to, to sanction it, I'm not even, I'm a, quite opposed to that. Yeah. I mean, as far as you're not inciting violence in times of elections, mm -hmm. yeah, as far as you're not showing extreme, or even just say por pornography in, in general, mm -hmm. those are the two things that I think that, you know, you should, you know, watch out for. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, social media is for everyone to speak and, and, you know, and express their opinions and show all kinds of content that you may have. I mean, I'm actually in support of it. All right. So, so um, secondly, I want to, my name is Lens Leon. Okay, please and, speak up a bit. And I want to know, what, what were your biggest <laughs> challenge in your prime? The biggest challenge in your prime. Okay. All right. For me, personally, my biggest challenge was the fact that I was a female working in a male-dominated industry. That was the biggest one. Because then every day, everybody will bypass you and go to the next male in command. Mm. Because they think you're, ma you're female and you can't do much. Um, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, a lot of females in the business also go through that at this particular point in time. The next challenge was... Because we didn't know computers then, we were doing all the hard work. But now, of course, there's IT. So, I mean, technology will do a lot of the work for you. But we had a lot of work to do then because, you know, there was no IT. There were no computers to help out make the work easier. But now, of course, it is less of a challenge. So now it's better. Right. Eddie, for you? Uh, my challenge was, I think, uh, getting the business acumen uh, or getting my, my career managed in a, certain, in a certain way that I could make the kind of money that I wanted to make. Right. Uh, I think that was the, my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. well, how and the where and, you know, now that I have all this popularity, I'm all over, okay, now what? You know, and I think that's where my main, my main challenge was. Mm. Okay, so please, in spite of all these challenges, what kept you moving? Passion. Passion. <laughs> 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 The passion. passion. Yeah. Final question. Okay, so thank you very much. And Miss Doreen, I like you very much because you have my elder sister's name. But today you broke out some shocking news to me that before you became a radio presenter, it was by a mistake. Of which I never knew about it till today. That's what you're I want saying. to know. Now we know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. Please, I want to know what inspired you to stay. Like something that is a mistake. No one wants to repeat his or her mistakes. Oh, I, I, yeah, I mean, if I say a mistake, I don't say that it was a mistake because at that time, when I started radio, I didn't have anything to do. I was waiting to go to university. There was nothing to do. There was a mistake in the sense that the lecturers were on strike. There was no school. I couldn't go to university and I was at home. But a lot of things happened prior to my getting to the part where I will say, I mean, um, I would backtrack for two minutes. I broke my two legs in a car accident. I missed out on a whole year of school. And so for me, I was in a rut at that time when I was ready to go back to school because a year had been wasted. But when I got into, uh, when I started doing radio as a hobby, I realized that it was something that I understood, something that I could do easily. So I'd rather switch from studying pharmacy, which I should have gone to do, and I started doing journalism and public relations. And so for me, the switch was, it wasn't a mistake. I was just saying it was, it was a blessing in disguise. It was supposed to happen, but I didn't realize how it, it, was gonna, it was gonna happen. I just had to go with what I was feeling and what I was thinking. It was a big um, decision that I took. My parents were against it. But I realized that I had to school myself to be a better person in the new position that I was trying to put myself into. Right. I think that will be all. Thank you so much, studio audience, for your questions. Uh, Lloyd Shola Adeyemi is on standby to give us uh, the entertainment news. Hi, Lloyd. Hi, Rosalie. We are back like we never live. I know, right? <laughs> two years. After two After years. After two years. And you're glowing, girl. So, darling. So, Lloyd is a Gen Z. Of course, the Gen Z girl, yeah. 
F. <laughs> so um, it is my turn to bring you uh, news happening in and around the world of entertainment. I always say that I am your loyal, your gist, and your girl, Lois Shaladevi. Without wasting much time, let's get into it. So, Rosalind, have you heard of JMJ? Yes. Yes. JMJ. JMJ music. Yes. Music producer says that he's still paying debts for music productions he did for Kaki. Now, you know Kaki hasn't been in the music scene for a while now. Let me explain why. So she took a break and, you know, he has come to explain that the reason why he's owing debts is because, you see, when it was his turn or during Kaki's time, streaming platforms weren't working the way they are working today. We didn't have TikTok working there that you can do some little dance moves and then your song will blow. They didn't have a lot of that. So they had to utilize concerts. And that's why they used to organize a lot of the concerts they were doing back then. Now he says there was no money to do that. So they had to go for loans to, you know, pay for these things, the location, to get people to come so that they can get their song out there. And up to now, even though Kaki is no longer in the music scene like we you, or she used to, he still owes debts and he's still paying to today. Let's take a look at the video. Money from Kaki's projects. Um, as we speak, I'm still servicing debt. How? Yes. A car. A car. Debt. Yeah. How? If, I mean, but her songs are there and you own the rights to the songs. Like I told you, you see, because of the time those songs came out, social media and the knowledge of how to promote, put the songs at the right places, we didn't know. Half of our songs are being monetized by other people <laughs> on YouTube. But she plays shows? So where... Where we were seeing inflows were direct shows. That's why back then we paid attention to shows more than mm. all of these mm. things. Mm. That's also why the old artists could not transition into the new era. Yeah. Because they were used to the old ways mm. of working. Mm. Where a, an executive producer would go and pay the studio, they will finish, Big Ben would buy the album, mm. and then the next thing is all about show. Mm. So he and Big Ben were just a cat. Mm. Now the next thing is his show. He's going, now it's not like that. Mm. Streams is where you make your money from. Mm. And they don't understand why they... It's too long. Wow. Kwame, Kwame. So, I beg, I, I want to do a follow-up. So, the Eka, you're talking about the debt, how did it come about? Yeah, because, once again, like I said, we were too much passion-driven that we were taking less calculated risks. You went for loan? I mean, we were traveling, going out to shoot videos paying the khaki's projects um as we speak i'm still servicing debt how yes a car a car debt yeah how if I mean, but her songs are there and you own the rights to the songs like i told you you see because of the time those songs came out social media and the knowledge of how to promote put the songs at the right places we didn't know Half of our songs are being monetized by other people <laughs> on YouTube. But she plays shows? So where, where we were seeing inflows were direct shows. That's why back then we paid attention to shows more than mm. all of these mm. things. Mm. That's also why the old artists could not transition into the new era. Yeah. Because they were used to the old ways of working. Mm. Where a, an executive producer will go and pay the studio, they'll finish, Big Ben will buy the album, mm. and then the next thing is all about show. Mm. So he and Big Ben were just a cat. Mm. Now the next thing is his show. He's going, now it's not like that. Mm. Streams is where you make your money from. Mm. And they don't understand why they... It's too long. Wow. Kwame, Kwame. So I beg, I, I want to do a follow-up. So the Eka, you're talking about the debt, how did it come about? Yeah, because once again, like I said, we were too much passion driven that we were taking less calculated risks you went for loan i mean we were traveling going out to shoot videos paying expensive If you hear Meko Bosho, at that time, it was very, very, you know, popular because right. that's how they were making their money. Mm. Streaming platforms were not available. And so I can say that we, the Gen Z's, are, you know, we are okay. We are fine. <laughs> and we have upper hand now. So, hey, Gen Z for the Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
right, so to my final story. Right. Um, there's good news, Roslyn, mm. because Maverick City is coming to Ghana. Mm. And they're not coming alone. They're coming with Kek Franklin. And they're going to be hosting a show here on the 18th of August, which is next month. And they are ready for us. Now, the organizers said that they have said that they chose Ghana because, first of all, they've heard so much about how peaceful this place is. And they cannot wait to meet their Ghanaian fans. Also, they say that uh, they are ecstatic because they get to share the word of God through music to us in Ghana here. And I mean, this is what we like because if you are like me, obviously you love the Maverick City group. They do right. really well. And they I'm think, hoping Team Eternity is on the bill. I mean, I mean, because we have to defy our yeah, ourselves right we there. Yeah, defy defy. <laughs> so yes, they will be there hopefully, but it's happening at the ICGC Christ Temple in Teshi on the 18th of August. So please grab your tickets if you want to go so that you can go and support them. And hopefully we see Team Eternity there to defy defy us in the crowd there. But I'll be there because who am I again? Your loyal, your just, and your girl, Lois Ladimi. But Rosin, this is why I leave you and I will see you. Thank you so much, Shola. <laughs> your girl, your jizz, all the Gen Z's. <laughs> Dory, <our time. laughs> were you were you were you gonna be able to do that on air at that time? Your oh, girl, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then. oh wow, so it was even crazier back then. Okay. Tell you the truth. Yeah. Well yeah. you had not too much holding you back. No, yeah, exactly. You do anything. Okay, so it's time for us to play a game. All right? Okay. So we are going to shuffle our cups, actually, and hopefully your cups will match. So we have this, a certain color down there. Now, if you're able to match it, then it means you are winning the game. Are we good? If I can't match it, somebody buy me lunch. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> this is changes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we'll go one by one. So, you just leave it like that. It, that's probably I, what it is. I was thinking about I'll that, you Leave it the know. way it is. Okay. Leave it the way it is. We that's probably how it, yeah. No, I yeah. think we should actually all go there. Okay. okay. But okay. nobody can pick All right. and have a look. Maybe the just studio me. audience can give okay, us so hints. Who wants to start, Doreen or... Please, ladies Doreen. first. All right, so Doreen, let's go. Mm. Inky Pinky Yami, Ponky, Lashy, father Yami. had a donkey, donkey died, father cried, Inky Pinky Ponky. Okay. Is there a time limit? Continue, oh. no. Continue. Um, <laughs> because when I don't get it correct, mm. people will buy me lunch. Mm -hmm. No, when you get it correct, you get it buy it. No, no, no. It's when I don't get it correct. <laughs> Happy lunches. No, you are not done. No. Are you done? I'm done. Is this your final decision? Yes, it's my final say. How many did Dorian get correct? <laughs> <laughs> You're buying the lunch? Nothing correct. Nothing wow. correct. Oh my goodness. Good. Can you clap for me, please? <laughs> I got it. Ah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Eddie, your turn. Thank you. Well, okay then. Yes. Uh, uh, mm. Going once, going twice. Uh, oh, uh, I didn't know how to play these games. It's for okay. everything. Oh. Uh, okay. Eddie? Oh no. What we don't know? Wait, tell us. Let me know. You got one. I got one oh, right. You got one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Done well then. No, so. no, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> who's, who's even that? I think I'll try. Let, let, let me try and see. Let's see. Um, is it okay? Not at all. So mine is even worse. So I win technically. Yeah. So 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 Eddie wins. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please don't get up. Eddie and Doreen, thank you so much for being here today. We are super grateful that you make time for us. And okay. we have had so much fun. Thank you so thank much. You. It's an so honor much. that today I get to host Damn. my mentor. <laughs> thank you so people much. People I used to watch on TV. Thank you. Radio. Thank you. <laughs> so we have other conversations coming your way. Up next is a conversation with our lawyer. That is the pocket lawyer segment, lawyer Senna Hoto, who is going to tell us the do's and the don'ts as a radio or a TV personality. Just stay with us.
you ready to have the blast of a lifetime? Get ready for the newest and ultimate game show here on Joy Prime, Family Arena! The Family Arena is a fun-filled game show which you see families battle it out in exciting games and quizzes to win amazing cash prizes and lots of other goodies as well. We are going to have so much fun here on the Family Arena. Now to participate, send your family name and the first name of three of your family members to 0551. 575757 five, five, and join us on this ultimate new game show, The Family Arena. If I over enjoy ourselves today, the Supper's Band, thank you so much. Guys, let's give them another round of applause. That's beautiful. And for those of you who haven't sent in your messages yet, I'm going to try. I know I was supposed to read it when Lois was here, but we'll see if we can, okay? And those who have sent it, you know, we love you. My studio audience are still here, studio audience. And Supper's Band that I told you earlier. And of course, Militant Academy will also be joining us and be doing the break dance. But it's time for us to talk about the implications 
of foul languages on TV or radio by an on air personality. And of course, our lawyer is here. Leia, lawyer, Senna Hoto! My one and only Esquire, 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 Esquire. How are you, Senna? I'm doing great. It's good great. to see you. Same. You are my official lawyer for changes. It's a pleasure and I am on it. Thank you so much. So yeah, I just, put you on the spot just, on TV. Just, <laughs> just talk to your accounts to do the, you know, and then that's You ain't got fine. no problem. This is changes. <laughs> this is changes. So whilst right. you are here, oh yeah, Milone. You believe okay. it, don't you? Yeah, I'll get the alert soon, so that's gonna happen. Fine. <laughs> anyway, so how is everything though? Uh, it's, it's been it's been great, you know. Um, a wonderful year. Things have been okay. At least uh, this is the second time I'm here this year, so hopefully we can connect with the audience and let them know the do's and the don'ts, what to do legally and what not to do. It's a fantastic show coming up as well, so I hope to be here and get the voice heard mm. and the message across too. So that's it. The message will definitely be well heard today. Now, uh, as a media uh, personality, there are things that... We sit on TV and we say, but there are implications to it. A typical example, recent times, I think two weeks ago, there's a man who sat on radio and spoke about the fact that he had had a sexual affair with a 14-year-old, and now he's been arrested by the police. What are some of the things that, as a media personnel, you are not supposed to say out on TV or on radio? Okay, thank you so much. You see, it's, it's easy to be carried away when you are behind the set. When the cameras are rolling and uh, you have an audience and they are all getting excited and you want to keep talking and keep talking. But what you say or do not say can be the difference between where you sleep tonight and then where you sleep the following morning. Mm -hmm. Because you can put a phrase across that can implicate you in either an ongoing investigation or cause one to be opened up because of what you have said. You see, there are some comments that either media personalities or guests or hosts on shows have said that have even made it very difficult for them to get representation by lawyers because there's something called admission. Mm. And in, in, in Ghanaian law, under the evidence decree, or the evidence act now, if you would want, once you have made certain admissions to a crime, then even in court, once you have admitted to an offense, the judge goes straight to conviction but and sentence. Can't you actually come up and say that, oh, you were acting as a, personal, a media personality, you were joking, you were having a show, and so you had to make the show a show? Well, you, two things. It depends on the prosecutor handling the case and the circumstances under which what you said was said. Mm. And, you know, comparing what you have said with what the investigation ongoing is. So, for example, the gentleman that um, you've had two um, situations on your set. One, which is the one you just mentioned, mm -hmm. and then the chef incident. Mm -hmm. So there's been admissions made on set. And so if a prosecutor mm. wants to go ahead and, and, and take them on with it, it's enough to have those confessions, you know, used as evidence against them in court. And once you've admitted and you've, you've confessed, mm -hmm. nobody forced you to do that. And so there are rules that the prosecutors will also follow. Mm. And once they follow those rules, you will be in trouble. Is there no protection act for presenters with regards to what they say? So what you say does not only put you alone in trouble, but may or may not put your institution that you work for also in trouble. That's why sometimes you would hear um, institutions, media houses will say that is the view of the, the guest and it doesn't represent what we as an institution, you know, hold and write. Our editorial policies do not reflect what they are trying to say. And so if you are at work and you are representing an institution, it is deemed that what you're saying is a reflection of what the editorial policies of the institution is. And so it can, it can have an implication on both you 
end their institution. Now, let me say that what you say on TV, on radio, even in, on the social media, these days people th take things for granted. Yeah. And these days there, there, there is the, the Ghana cards and all of that that makes tracing your identities much, much, much easier yeah. than you think. Mm -hmm. Even your SIM cards, the IMEIs, make it quite easier for you to be traced than you think. The comments we make as media personalities, as hosts and guests, when we sit behind the cameras, when we are in the dark behind our computers and our phones on social media, thinking that we do not, nobody can see us, opens, up to so, opens us up to so many things. One, to civil actions and then to criminal actions. Uh, within the course of the year or some, sometime last year, we've seen a certain, a certain gentleman being prosecuted mm. for treason charges, for inciting people, you know, against the state. You know, this, this incitement, what is it that you say that actually is an incitement to the people? So it, it depends on... Because somebody will say, oh, economy is not good. When you go out there and you are voting, blah, 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 blah. Could that be an incitement? If you're saying the economy is not good, and so when you go out and then you vote, make sure that you're voting based on what you feel in your pocket. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, that does not amount to any incitement. Okay. You understand? But the question is, the comments you're putting across, are they comments that can, you know, whip up interest enough to cause damage to the democracy that we have to cause an, a government or an institution to be overthrown is are those comments or those charged statements inflammatory statements enough to cause somebody to be injured so you can be you can be the person that directs the mind of the mob okay and so by your statement if you're directing the mind of the mob then you can also be held liable for what the mob does. Right. Anybody has a question? Yes, you do. Please, go ahead. So, please, um, concerning this particular video, mm -hmm. um, I was in a studio with a friend when we saw the video. So he made a statement that in a few hours' time, this guy would be arrested. But then I, I argue that um, they can't make an arrest if there's no evidence because he's saying he has done it, but there's no evidence for him to be arrested. But a few hours' time, he was arrested. So I want, to, I want to ask if the police can make an arrest um, without any evidence. You don't need evidence to make an arrest. You need evidence to prosecute. So on the reasonable suspicion that a crime has been committed, the police can go ahead and then cause an arrest. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. So we'll take our final question okay. then. Please. Um, with the look of things, um, we look at our, so, at our social media of late and things that people are putting out there. Please, as a legal practitioner, what are the measures that um, you've put in place or the country have put in place to fight against that? Because it's misrepresenting our country out there. So that's my question. Okay. That's a, a tough one to answer because the social media companies, you would realize that Facebook um, or Meta and the rest are putting in place policies so that when you put comments there that are injurious to other people, when you put images there that are nude and pornographic and stuff like that, you can report and then you have them taken down. Because you see, what you put out there potentially has what we call reputational damage to people and you can get sued for reputational damage. It's what we call defamation. Whether it's in writing or orally, we've had to deal with quite a number of it in, in, in our courts, and then I've had to personally represent people in that, in that sphere. And so we must be very guarded in what we say. We must ensure that as we put across our thoughts, our ideas, we must ensure that we do not do that to injure other people's reputation. Because reputation is hard earned. And reputation in this instance can be injured either you know, through what you have said, 
and then the person has suffered some form of harm or damage over it. Or where in a person's culture, certain comments, you know, are considered taboos and, and, and things of the sort. When you pass them, whether they have been personally injured or not, they will have a course of action against you, and then they can sue you for pretty much all that you, you're making online, and then the fact that you think that nobody can see you, these are things that they can hold you responsible for as, as well. Right. Sana, thank you so much for being here. We are very grateful. We are all happy, right? Yeah. And we are very satisfied with what Sena has said. So a big round of applause. <laughs> Senna, thank you so much. And of course, we'll have you again right here on Changes. Senna is our lawyer, Senna Hotel Esquire. Thank you once again. Thank you, Rosalie. Right. So, Supper's Ban is still in the building. And Supper's Ban is going to give us something. We're going to dance a little bit. And then we get to talk to them. Supper's Ban, are we ready for another song? Yeah, I think we are ready. And I think I'm putting on my dancing shoes right now. My audience, you're also you're ready, right? Yes, you are. So now, what's your favorite song? <laughs> what? You put me on the spot. I, I have to put you on the spot. What's your favorite song? I'm a Kojo Entry fan. You're a Kojo Entry fan? Yes, yeah, so... Okay, so he's a Kojo Entry fan. So which one are you giving to us? Yes, so we are ready to give us some Kojo Entry. And then, so but, Senna is actually. But I have ready. two left legs. You have to, me. Don't worry so, at all. Even I if really it's two right, ask. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Summer's Band is going to take us away with some great tunes. And for you who have joined us, we want to say a very big thank you. Don't go anywhere, but we have another conversation coming your way as well.
Hello, W.O.C.J. How are you? You're very well. It's good to have you here. Yes, man. Surprise, man. Speak up a bit for me. Don't yes, Hey, so Japan. <laughs> <laughs> How is Safa's band doing? You, you've been great today. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for being here. Yeah, welcome. So, uh, so where have you been, Safa's band? Um, Safa's band is located at uh, Weja Baras, 48th Engineer Red Band, Weja Baras at Teshi. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, but formerly it was uh, Field Engineers, and later on, the year 1990, mm. we became. 48th engineer regiment. You know, back Get in me. the day, we used to hear about suppers, 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 and all of a sudden, we were not hearing about suppers. Suppers is still on the... The suppers was established on the year 1976. That time, some of, some of us were not born. even born. Uh -huh. But uh, they reformed it somewhere in 1992 with one of okay. our senior officers called uh, Major General Edward Manfo. Okay. And from there up to now, we are keeping service van going. That's fantastic. Yes, please, yeah. So you play for events as well? Everything we do so for So if everything. somebody wants to book you, how can the person get in Oh, that? please, we have our cast and a number and everything. We just give the number out okay. in the town. They meet, do you have the number it. available? Yes, now? please. So yeah. you can give it out? Oh, okay. So when you want a, a program, you want to have a surprise van, that is a 0244202417. That is a, the band of use number, then after that, we give out the other one too. Give yes, the other please. one too. So, yeah. Sapers Band, how many people make a part of Sapers Band? Um, please, uh, we are having the personnel of uh, 18. 18 people, including driver, packets, and everything. So, if we book an event, we should make sure that we are hosting 18 people. The 18 people coming and will not be on the stage. We have 12 people okay. being on the stage, okay. the drummers, and marksmen, and those people. But in all, we are some of up to 18 people. Are you on yeah. social media too? We are on social media. So what's the please. name on social media? Um, please, we have a uh, Southwest International on the social media. When we check it, we have us on the social Fantastic. media. Fantastic. Yes. W.O.C., thank you so you much for bringing your men yes, here yes, today. Yes, you Very grateful. Very and of course, we've been dancing and having so much fun today because yes, of Southwest Band. Yes, I'm going to book Southwest Band for other events as well. And we'll you at home, you have to book them. The way we've had fun here, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. We can't even stop saying Charlie, yes, Charlie, yes, Charlie. <laughs> so, I think you should give us another tune. Eh? Give us another tune before we go for a break. And right after the break, I told you the Militant Academy is here. They are here and they are coming to boogie for us as well. So, Sapphire's Band, are you ready? We are ready for you. You're still watching Changes the Season 2 edition of Changes. <laughs>
you ready to have the blast of a lifetime? Get ready for the newest and ultimate game show here on Joy Prime, Family Arena! The Family Arena is a fun-filled game show which you'll see families battle it out in exciting games and quizzes to win amazing cash prizes and lots of other goodies as well. We are going to have so much fun here on the Family Arena. Now to participate, send your family name and the first name of three of your family members to 0551. 575757 five, five, and join us on this ultimate new game show, The Family Arena! to stay informed about the latest educational reforms and school interventions? The Ministry of Education in partnership with the Teacher Education Journal is excited to bring you season two of the Education TV talk show, The Edu Talk Show. The Edu Talk Show is your go-to source for timely information and discussions on the latest trends in education. Uh, the nation that prepares its youth to see the opportunities are the nations that are going to transform their fortunes. Every week, we'll dive into the key issues shaping Ghana's education sector, bringing you insights directly from the experts. All the giant technical and uh, vocational education and training institutions have been retooled and re-equipped. Uh -huh. So the new curriculum, students should do more than the teacher. Join us on this channel as we speak with special guests about the reforms and innovations transforming our schools. I am Emifa Apo and I'm your host. Tune in to the EduTalk show and stay ahead in the world of education. You're still watching Changes, and of course, we told you that the Militants Academy will be joining us, and they are here. So my studio audience have to welcome the Militants Academy with a huge round of applause. Yes, and it's exciting in the studio, actually. Today's been 
Amazing. Our first day of season two. Thank you so much for sticking and staying with us. A big thank you to the Sappers Band as well. They have been amazing. And I want to talk to these gentlemen before I even allow them to dance because, Charlie, they've taken dance to a whole new level. Hi, guys. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Thank you. Like, I've seen superstars. Like, yo, 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 superstars. You guys are like celebrities right now, right? Yeah, sure, sure. So you can't sit in Trotro again? Oh, we can. We are can. you sure? Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. sit in Trotro? Yeah, sure. But it's like, how do you do your dance move? Like, how do you actually select yourselves to be a part of militant group? Uh, initially, when, when we started this was where we are from, we know where we are from. So mm. Where are you from? Uh, we are from, um, from Shukura. Okay. Shukura, close to dance. Oh, so you're Shukura boys? Yeah, sure. I know Shukura very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. sure, sure, sure. yeah. On your way to dance woman. Dance woman, yeah, sure, sure. I, around There's North Kaneshi, there. there, you pass yeah. the corner like that. Yeah, there, ah, I know there. <laughs> <laughs> so we started this thing way back from Jerusalem, where we started picking up a talent and some more like uh, Sub Zero, mm -hmm. and the other, we have other people, but they are not here now. Okay. Because some of them are. So, how many is in the group? We are like we are like six now, the faces of Militant Dance Family. We are okay, like six you're now. six. But I'm the leader and the co-founder of Militant Dance. So you started it. Yeah, sure. So why did you decide to start it? Yeah, that's that's my passion. Mm. They I, they stopped me many times. My my dad wasn't interested in for me doing this kind of dance and stuff because he thought maybe the dancers are kubolo and stuff. Mm. So I told I believed in myself and I know I worked hard. And I know very soon everything is gonna be okay. Is your so father here, happy with you now? Um, actually, my father is late now, oh. so I know where he, where he is. He will be proud of me. He definitely is yes, proud yes. of you. Yes, sure. But is dance paying? Yeah, it's paying. It's paying, eh? Yeah, when you brand yourself. Well. How much do you charge? Uh, I can't disclose it here. Yeah, like, but small, but plenty. It big. It big, eh? Yeah, big. <laughs> I like I like your honesty. <laughs> We don't have too much time to talk, okay. but why the name Militant Academy? You know, when you hear a name called Militant, you should know brave, like, like brave and focus, you see. And we, Militant Dance Family, the main reason why we, uh, we had that name is we know what we want to achieve. Okay. And we are, where we are from is not this kind of DBDB mm. lifestyle, it's hard. Mm. You see, like, yeah, the Shukura life. In, in your day, 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 <laughs> so you guys, so how many, you say you're how many, six in number? Yeah, six, six. But when we saw you on stage with Nasi, you were more than six. You were about, what, ten? Did you recruit new people? Yeah, we have, we have students. We oh, have like we have, well. we have like okay. almost fifty students right now. So normally we do uh, yeah we have like almost fifty students right now. And where we do our dance class every Saturdays at Legon City Mall. Okay. Yeah, the rate is just thirty CD per. Oh, and we can come and learn how to dance. Uh, even if you are not uh, from the junior side, from the mother side. In case you don't know how to dance, crap. Thirty CDs. Thirty CD. Wow, that's good. Yes, sure. And you have a program coming up. Yeah, we, we normally have a program that we do. It's an annual program that we do okay. every December. Okay. Yeah, that's Millifest. Yeah, it's like a festival or something, just to give back to the society. And also we do some donations and stuff. So we will actually need you guys to on board. We, you don't have a problem at all. Yeah, sure. Because you're also going for a competition. Yeah, a yeah, dance, yeah. A dance yeah competition. we have a competition on 28th. Okay. Uh, it's a church program. Okay. A boogie, boogie, boogie King. Accra Boogie King. Accra Boogie King. Yeah, it's a church program. We just want to go and do it. And actually, what we had in mind is when we win that ultimate prize, we are just going to use it to uh, do a donation on maybe for the streets and stuff. Oh, oh wow. That's beautiful. Militant dance. dance family. Thank you so much for being no, here. No. We'll be dancing to share any <laughs> money. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. Yeah. And this is all time will permit us for... I was going to say prime warning, and I realized that, no, season two of Changes is back. And now, my baby...
Changes is here and it's here to stay. A very big thank you to the entire production team. It's been amazing. We couldn't have done this without you. To my channel manager, Emily Nyako, I love you. Brenda, I love you. Sami, I love you. I wish I could mention everybody's name. Sound, uh, light, uh, camera, everybody. Thank you so much. A big thank you to my costume as well. Uh, this is from Rima. And a big thank you to Kojo Africa for putting this together. I'm super grateful. My hair is by hair. Excellency, and of course, my studio audience have been amazing as well. It's like to the audience, do it, <laughs> and of course, Shola was also here to give us entertainment news. And a big thank you to you, Sapis Band, as well. Super grateful. A big thank you to my Iketuade Akiti Boge, Akiti Boge Juan. Thank you so much for the hard work. To you, Martin, to everybody, we love you. And to the bloggers in the building. I love all my bloggers. Thank you so much. I, I want to mention names. GH Kweku, GH Dave, Tina Baby, uh, Secure Nation, all of you, uh, Elikem, the blogger. Thank you all so much for being here. We are super grateful. So, militants, Dance family, you yes. are ready to take us away. Hard. Do the boogie for us. <laughs> Do the boogie militants. My name is Rosie Belly. Enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, Time has come to hear the truth. Yo, 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 yo. About Some this tragic never learn. war. Never learn. Men do not easily assume you the task learn. of opposing bad government's learn. policy, especially no, in yeah. time of war. But we tell them, some boy don't never learn. Tell them put down the gun, can't knock my skin a burn. But them still pick it up back like them don't give a fuck. Them not take a chat. None of them don't concern. Do not like none at all. Them hustle hard. Money got to earn like them take a wrong turn. Talk we attack all the shows and fund them up.
to have the blast of a lifetime get ready for the newest and ultimate game show here on George Prime Family Arena <laughs> the Family Arena is a fun filled game show which you see families battle it out in exciting games and quizzes to win amazing cash prizes and lots of other goodies as well we are going to have so much fun here on the Family Arena now to participate Send your family name and the first name of three of your family members to 0551 57 57 57 and join us on this ultimate new game show, The Family Arena. What makes life beautiful is that it never remains the same. When you look at it, it changes. And it changes because you looked at it. Again, change is good. It makes you see the various aspects of life that you didn't know. Change challenges you to do what you think you could never do. If you want to be relevant and abreast with time, society and the world, then be ready for change. We'll bring you intriguing conversations, live performances, and of course, 
shocking revelation from our guest. Welcome to the brand new season of Changes with me, Roslyn Fali, and it's twice a week and it's live on Jart Prime. <laughs> Remember, if you are not getting the results that you want from your hustle and jostle, then you definitely need a change.